testimony or two before uh, before the preaching. Give God the glory. Amen, Brother Murray. I just, I, I know it's the wrong way to put it, but thank God that my dad had the prostate cancer, and I wish they had caught it in time to, before it spread, but um, it'll be 10 years tomorrow. And I laid on the table and had the seeds no. implanted in my and no, no. cancer free as of today. It's been 10 years. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's a wonderful thing. And any, any guy that's over 50 here, he needs to get that PSA blood work done. Kind of on a regular basis. basis. Yeah. Every, uh, twice a year. At least twice a year. Need to do that. Uh, amen. Somebody else? Yes. Yeah. Well, Laura is going to be leaving the hospital. They take got her off the ventilator. She's eating. She's breathing completely on her own. And she's going into the nursing home, I believe, tomorrow. Right, so or, do you know which one they're going to put her in? Uh, what is uh, Lake Point, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Where? Lake Point. Uh, it's the one right next to the community. Right hospital. up by the hospital. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad that. Uh, they checked everything on my mother, and they said that uh, her lungs is clear. And she's back to the nursing home. So Amen. Praise the Lord for that. But I just hope they know what they're doing. <laughs> so Amen. I'm not Amen. Be praying. Put it in God's hands, you know. Grab a heart song. Don't forget Margaret. She's uh, uh -huh. been real sick. Some She's uh, broken out with some sores and things such as that. And, uh, I'm not sure what what caused it, but uh, keep her in your prayers. Any others that are, any others that are yes? Uh, yes, my daughter Hope, now 16 months after she broke her back, um, she has 90-some percent of her mobility back, and she just got reassigned by the union to, she's going to Fort Bragg on some assignment, and uh, was able to negotiate four 10-hour work days rather than five or six 12s. Amen. Well, that's good. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pray for our people in the service, and uh, some, real, some real needs there. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to John chapter 6 tonight. John chapter 6. John chapter 6 and uh, uh, let's look at uh, verse 47. Jesus said in verse 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread that cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus saith unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat my flesh and, and uh, drink my blood, ye have no life. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath everlasting life, and I will raise him at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, uh, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat uh, manna and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. That was 
us pray. Father, help us now. <clears throat> to understand. Lord, help us to not be as those that went back. Help us, Lord, to stay with Jesus. Help us, Lord, to understand. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I'm preaching tonight on the subject, staying with Jesus. Now, if, you've, if you read this scripture over and over, it's going to give you the, uh, the thought of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church believes that the bread that you take at a communion service is the flesh of Jesus Christ. They believe uh, in a doctrine called transubstantiation. They believe that the priest has got the power to, to change the bread into flesh. Uh, now that's not what God was talking about here. He was talking about receiving Him. That's what you did when you got saved, amen? You received Jesus Christ. He came into you. And, uh, and that is not a, uh, that's not a physical thing, that's a spiritual thing. And uh, when He shed His blood on Calvary and you pled for the blood to cleanse you from your sin, the blood of Jesus Christ came into you and cleansed you from your sin. Now that's what the Bible says. But the Bible says here in verse, uh, verse 53, look at it, then Jesus saith unto them, uh, uh, no, excuse me, uh, verse 52, the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, how can this man uh, give us his flesh to eat. And uh, now where's, where's the part that says, uh, and many of them left. Is that in another, uh, one of the other books? I bet that's in well, the That's book. a few verses uh, forward in 66. <coughs> 66, okay. Um, Look at uh, verse 16, uh, verse 66. And that time, and from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What a sad thing. A lot of people come and go. One of the greatest heartbreaks of the ministry, and everywhere I go, it's, it amazes me that uh, people... Uh, they say, well, how long have you been there? And I tell them how long I've been there, and everybody's wowed. <laughs> they say, wow. You know. Uh, and you, you know why, they, why they're wild? Because so many people quit. I was saddened uh, when one of the, our neighboring churches uh, started a big building program, and as I watched that building program progress, I, I, was, I was saddened because of all the money that was being spent. And uh, this happens a lot. And, and one of the reasons I'm, uh, by the grace of God, one of the reasons I'm here is because, because through the years of my ministry, I've never wanted to build something on the back of my people. <clears throat> when the Lord gives us a place to go or gives us an opportunity to build or to have something better, uh, you know what I want? I want to make sure that 100% of our people are, are, are with us on that thing. And that we're just waiting on God's timing and God's placing and uh, what happens so often. And you, you as congregants, you don't see it. But the preachers see it. And it's always amazing to me that, that people uh, watch, watch uh, the things like that and uh, buildings go up and then all of a sudden God calls that preacher somewhere else. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible thing. And I, I've seen it over and over and over. 
uh, people will get, get themselves into trouble financially and get the church into trouble financially and then all of a sudden, you know, God's calling them somewhere else. It's a terrible thing. They, they kind of quit and uh, back off and don't see things through. Some sadly depart. There were times when Jesus was more popular than other times when he fed the, when he fed the, the, the people, when he healed them. They followed him. But when he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, they said, this is a hard saying. You know, who can receive it? And many of them fell away and strove with him no more. So people say that, and I, and I say, well, I've been there a long time. And they go, oh, wow. Because it's, a lot of people quit. I was raised in a big church, and uh, we were running, by the time I went into the service, we were probably running about 500 uh, on Sunday morning. <coughs> and uh, we had a, our teen Sunday school class probably ran somewhere in the neighborhood of 100, somewhere around 100, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, uh, our teenagers. and. Uh, I watched people come and go. I, I watched people that were preaching on the platform come and go. I saw uh, ladies that were singing in the in the choir, ladies in the trio. They came and came and went. And uh, it's a sad thing when those things happen. No pastor wants to see people quit. No pastor wants to see people uh, leave the ministry uh, because because you know what. Because God called you to the ministry. Amen. Amen. And some days in the ministry are going to be good days. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that you'll have more good days than bad days. But you know what? The fact of the matter is you'll probably have more bad days than good days. Because we're in a battle. We're in a fight. We're in a war. And war is a terrible thing. And we're fighting against principalities and powers, against the uh, rulers of darkness and high places, spiritual wickedness and high places. That's what we're fighting against. And the devil wants to take every opportunity that he can to, to rile you up, to, to, to break your heart, to make you feel bad, and to blame God for it. Isn't that what he did with the very first sin in the garden? Amen. Amen. The devil came to Eve and said, Hey, Eve, God's holding out on you. <laughs> Here's something wonderful. Here's a wonderful uh, piece of fruit. And, uh, and God's holding out on you, Eve. <laughs> and, 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 and don't you know that God knows that if you ate that fruit, that you'd be just as smart as God. That's what the devil does to us. Amen. Or you know what? Somebody didn't treat you right. Or you didn't, you, you know, you didn't get to do what you wanted. Hey, listen, listen. Uh, could I tell you something? There's a lot of times I don't get to do what I want to do. Amen. Oh yeah. But stay with Jesus. Many have departed. Look at Titus one. Or Second Timothy. Titus chapter 1 and verse 16. Uh, verse 15. Under the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their minds and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being an abominable and disobedient unto all good work, reprobate. You know what? I don't want to be that guy. Some depart from the faith. Some leave the ministry. My 40 plus years in the ministry, I've seen a lot of people I've seen big people fall. 
big people, people with millions and millions of dollar ministries and millions and millions of dollars in buildings and, and uh, things just that were just seemed like everything was going right. But they fell. Some of the preachers that I've looked up to, I was just a young man in the ministry, and it's a young fellow that I looked up to in the ministry, and uh, was talking with another preacher about him, and saying how wonderful it was, what a wonderful ministry he had. Uh, we, I was talking about where God was going to take him in the future, and a fellow, uh, the, the preacher looked me in the eye and says, listen, you can just keep your eyes on the Lord, and don't you worry about him. He's never going to be where you think he is. You know what? He was right. He was right. I saw one of the preachers that ran with, in fact, two preachers that ran with the sword of the Lord. Uh, one of the biggest independent, fundamental, Bible-believing ministries in, in, the, in the world. And uh, two, two fellows that had shared the platform nationally, internationally. One of them quit the ministry over alcoholism. One was charged with child sexual abuse. sad when people depart. And could I tell you something? Listen to me. I don't care who you are. What happened to those people could happen to you, could happen to me. That's why we've got to stay close to the Lord. That's why we've got to make sure that everything we do is to honor and glorify Him. It's not about me. It's not about the church. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. Some are going to depart from the faith, Paul said. But you know what? The, 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 the joy of my heart, the joy of my heart is that, that people stay with Jesus. Amen. I want you to stay with Jesus. You get, you get stuck on living for Jesus and doing what uh, God wants you to do and and, and, and doing everything that, that is honoring and glorifying to him, you know what? You could, you, could, you could attack hell with a squirt gun. And it wouldn't bother you. <laughs> you know why? You're doing it in Jesus' name. You're doing it for the Lord. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to stay with Jesus. One preacher said that over, listen to this, over 800 people quit the ministry every year. You know what? That was a long time ago. I can't tell you what those numbers are today. I was talking with a missionary just recently, and, and uh, he pastors two churches. Finishes preaching at one church and then travels in about 30, 40 miles and preaches again at another church. You know why? Because people need pastors. You know what we need to do as God's people, as, as, a, as a congregation, we need to pray that the Lord of the harvest would send laborers. We need laborers in the ministry. We need people that will that'll separate themselves and 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 become holy as unto the Lord and say, Lord, I want you to use my life. I want, I want you to, uh, to, to be honored and glorified in me. I don't want to be one that quits. Amen. I don't want you to be one that quits. I was had, had a young lady that sang with the a ladies group and uh, we were sitting on the preacher's back porch one Saturday afternoon and the preacher said 
looked this little girl in the eye and says, you know what? I'm afraid, I'm afraid you're about ready to quit. And she said, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to quit, preacher. You know what? It wasn't, it wasn't several weeks later, six, eight weeks later, last time I ever saw her in church. Amazing. Saw so another young fella, same thing. Oh, I'm not going to quit. I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to quit. I'll never quit. And you know what? After I saw so many people doing that, you know, what I, you know what I learned? You know what I began to do? As I watched people quit and people quit and people quit and people uh, do things that go another direction and go off in another direction and do something stupid, you know what I began to think? I, I began to think this. You know what? I don't ever want to say I'm not going to quit. <laughs> I said, boy, that sounds like the death nail, amen? That sounds like the death nail. And uh, once somebody says they're never going to quit, that's when they quit. <laughs> so you know what I've done all these years? I've said, by the grace of God, I never want to you lay me to rest and bring me here to the church and put me out here in the front and hopefully some of you cry and boy. <laughs> oh, poor preacher. You know, I'll be kicking up gold dust. And he can just win quick. <laughs> you know what? I want you to say you never quit. Just kept on going. Kept on going. It's sad when people quit. I mean, you 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 know people that, that used to fellowship with you at the church. They're not, they don't, they don't, they're not here anymore. What do we need to do? We need to we need to pray and say, Lord, I want to stay with you. I don't ever want to quit. And I know the only way that I can stay in the faith and stay faithful to you is to trust you to help me to stay faithful. I need to stay with Jesus. Then some have departed and some have substitutes that aren't sufficient. Now, our friends across the street, Church of Christ, did you know that they used to be, they used to believe just like we did. Did you know that? It was a Baptist that started the Church of Christ. It was a Baptist that started the Church of Christ. Uh, did you know that it was a Baptist that started the Seventh-day Adventist. It was a Baptist. And he started putting rules on his people and before too long, they were saying, you know what, we're going to worship on the Sabbath. You know? And uh, that, he was a Baptist. They substituted right for wrong and gone another direction I've seen people go off and Paul talks about some that have gone off and carried away people now, I'm, I'm not I'm in favor of, of, of people starting other ministries I'm, I'm in favor of that but I, I sure hope that if somebody starts another ministry that they're doing the same thing that they learned here amen I know that uh, I know that Brother Murray down there in Pennsylvania is doing the same thing that we do here. Amen. I know Brother Dave Cottrell, he's doing the same thing down there that he was doing here. Brother Dave Simmons, bless his little heart, working with those kids in Sandusky. 
You know what he's doing? He's preaching the same thing there that he heard here. Thank God for it. I, I'd, love to, I'd love to see other churches started. I'd love to see us expand and, and have other people start ministry someplace and, uh, and get folks saved and get folks soul winning and get folks reading their Bible and get folks praying and uh, get folks going out knocking on doors. I don't want people to substitute that for which is not sufficient. A lot of people have left and started other things. But they weren't the right things. They didn't stay with Jesus. I want you to stay with Jesus. You know, when the Lord comes, I want him to be able to put his hand on your shoulder and say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. We're supposed to do stay with Jesus. Let's look at John chapter 6 and verse 66. <clears throat> John 6. Uh, well, look at uh, 65, and he said, Therefore, uh, therefore I said unto you that no man can come to me except it be given him of the Father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked with him. Walked no more with him. The multitudes, listen to this, the multitudes never spend an evening in prayer. The multitudes are never faithful to the house of God. That's just the way it is. You know, uh, and, and don't get discouraged. If you're trying to get somebody uh, coming to church and be faithful and, and, and you're working with them and you're trying to get them to be faithful, listen, don't be discouraged because they don't come. Listen, you're not going to get a reward from God for, for them coming. You're going to get a reward for go, from God because you're trying to get them to come. Amen? Amen? The reward is in the battle. God's already given us the victory. <laughs> Amen? The victory is the Lord's. The crowd's never going to come. The crowd was against Noah, right? <laughs> I mean, could you imagine poor old Noah preaching for hundreds of years as he was building that ark? And uh, he'd build a little bit during the day and then stand out on the bow and say, It's going to rain! It's going to rain! Uh, get ready! Come into the ark! Preach the same message for over 200 years. How many people got saved? You know, Noah and his wife, and Ham, Shem, and Japheth, and their wives, and that was everybody. Now, I'll tell you what, would you, would you get discouraged if you preach the same message for 200 years and only six, only, uh, excuse me, eight people got saved? I'll tell you what, that'd be discouraging. Crowd was against Noah. Crowd was against Enoch. The Bible said that the, 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 the days were terrible. And there was sin and degradation everywhere. But Enoch walked with God. God took him. Crowd was against Moses. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Here, here's a guy that took them out of slavery. They were killing them and starving them and making them do extra work. And, and Moses says, okay, let my people go. And he, and he takes all of them out and takes them out into the desert. And God feeds them, gives them meat uh, every day, and gives them uh, bread every day, and gives them water every day. 
And what happened? He goes up on the mountain and, and uh, the, the crowd gets, gets rowdy and says, Listen, uh, we don't know about this, this Moses and we don't know about his God. Let's make us a, our own God. Let's quit. Let's quit on Moses. Moses comes back and sees him living in debauchery, drunk, <coughs> naked, worshiping a golden calf. The crowd's always going to be against us. disciples went back walk no more with him. Staying with Jesus doesn't mean freedom from criticism. In fact, if you stay with Jesus, if you try to do what's right, people are going to criticize you. They'll criticize you. You know, they'll, they'll call you, the, you know, when I was in school, one of the, the hardest things uh, being in school was that people called you a holy roller. Uh, you, yeah, if you had a, had, had a gospel track in your pocket or carried a Bible to school, they called you a holy roller. And they didn't bother you if you were carrying a Playboy magazine or something like that, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but if you were carrying a Bible, you're going to be criticized. So if you stay with Jesus, don't, don't think that you're going to be free from criticism because you're going to be criticized. It, 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 I don't care what you're doing. If you're, if you're trying to honor the Lord, you'll, you'll find criticism. But you know what? If you're doing it for God, Criticism shouldn't make any difference at all. Amen? See, because you, what you did, I hope you did, I hope you did to please the Lord, not people. <laughs> I try to do things, I try to do things not to please people. Now, now, now listen, I, I'm not saying that, that I don't love you. I, I don't try to, my best to, to make sure that everybody... Uh, <coughs> Gets what you need. But my main objective is honoring God. And if, I, if I'm trying to honor the Lord and do what God wants me to do and you don't like it, I'm going to try not to get upset over that. Because I did what I did because I love the Lord and because I want to honor Him. <coughs> You'll always have people to criticize. Jesus was called a liar. <laughs> Did He lie? He didn't lie. He was called a blasphemer. He never blasphemed. People said He was an imposter. He was no imposter. He he is who he is. And he said that I am that I am. You'll not have freedom from criticism if you stay with Jesus. In fact, you'll probably end up with more criticism. Staying with Jesus doesn't mean that you're going to be absent from enemies. In fact, if you're staying with Jesus, you'll probably have more en enemies than you will friends. The only friends that you'll have are the ones that are trying to do the same thing you're doing. Amen? Anybody else think you're funny? Whew, man, strange. Go to, what do you mean? You go, you go to church Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night too? And, 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 and you read the Bible and you, and, and you pray and you, you don't listen to this kind of music. You listen to that kind of music. And, 
And uh, I was sitting down with some some uh, people and says, "What's your favorite movie?" And I says, "My goodness, I I don't know too many movies." Amen. I can tell you my favorite Bible story. Amen. I'll tell you that. And, and, and I tell you what, if you do go to the movies, it's just about every everything that they do in the movies is that you can find the same thing in the Bible, amen. Every every plot that was ever hatched, they're all in here, amen. All right. Won't give you free from criticism or free from enemies or free from hardship. I'll tell you one thing that staying with Jesus will do for you. You'll get God's approval. And that's all we need is His approval. Well done, thou good, faithful servant. I want God's approval. One writer wrote, Must I be carried to the skies on flowery beds of ease while others fought to win the prize and sail through bloody seas? Must I go empty-handed? I don't want to go empty-handed. I want when I get to heaven for a lot of people to say, Well, the young I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad that you told me about Jesus. I'm so glad that you stayed with Jesus. I'll be glad that you stayed with Jesus. Let's stand and pray. <coughs> Father, I sure want to cry my heart is that that we'd all stay with you. That we would commit ourselves to <coughs> trying every day to be in the perfect center of your will and to accomplish the things that you want us to accomplish. Bless us, Lord, as we leave this place and help us, Lord, as we leave tonight to say, Lord, I want to stay with you I want to honor you. Now bless the fellowship, Father, tonight. Lord, be with all those that are sick. Help us, Lord, to be there for them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, uh, let's sing page uh, 305. 305. Let's figure out. Perfect, perfect song. Three zero five. 